And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Stephenson's Rocket by Reiner Knizia. This is not a new game, this is a new printing of this game from Holy Grail Games. They are Grail Games, I'm sorry. They make games that, you know, they, they make new games too, but they take older games and bring them back. I first heard of Stephenson's Rockets well over a decade ago when it was nominated for the Origins Sci-Fi Award because it had the word rocket in it. It has nothing to do with that. It's actually about trains and connecting them. It's a train game. There's a lot of them by Reiner Knizia. Not quite as many of those. This is a classic. Let's take a look. So in this game, there are different railroad stations. There are seven different colors that are on the board. And these are the railroad lines, and their trains are ready to go starting from the different railroad lines. And you can see them down here. Each player has a marker to show how many shares they have of that railroad line. There are also 12 cities marked on the board, and there are different industries in each of those cities. Each player is going to have their own board with their own color, with different stations of their color, and cubes to show influence. On a player's turn, they're going to get two actions. They can take the same action more than once if they so desire. The only rule is if you're going to extend a line of a train, you can only do each train once per turn. I can't do the same train twice. So let's talk about the two other options that you have. One of the options you have is you can simply invest in an industry in a city, and I can just pick any spot up here and be like, I'm going to invest in fur in Cambridge. All right, no worries. Another thing you can do is you can build one of your stations on the board. You just take your station and put it on the board. Whoa! There's actually a lot of rules about where to put stations, okay? When you place a station on the board, you can't put it on a town, on a city, or on a hex that already has a track on the board, a locomotive on the board, another station. It also can't go next to a locomotive or next to a station. I think I'm fine placing it there. Great. And then finally extending a track. So when you extend a track, you're just going to pick one of the lines and move it off of its space. If it's on a station, fine, but let's say you move it off that space, you're going to be putting a track behind it. It's going to be building track as it goes. Uh, once, whenever you do that to that particular station, you will get one share of that company as soon as you say you're going to be extending the line of a company. However, another player may say, I don't like the way you're moving that train and they can call a veto round. And in a veto round, each player in turn order will bid a certain number of their shares of that company. So let's say I have four shares of this and blue has three and white has two. Blue might bid a couple shares of that uh, to stop me and blue will say instead it's gonna be moving this way. And I would have to change the track accordingly, like this unless I'm willing to bid more. Only the winning bidder pays their shares to the bank. You actually give up shares of that company, and then you pick which direction a train is going to move into. Now, the way this game works is basically the train's connecting to towns and cities. If a train connects to a city, then whoever has the most cubes in that city is going to score points, uh, and second most. If it connects to a town, then whoever has the most stations on the line and these stations will be on the line, uh, is going to get points as the game goes by, and half prestige points that you're going to be getting by connecting to these towns. And you can't connect to the same town or city more than once. And if you connect your train into another train, then boom, you go away. You merge together. So let's say, for example, the green train had decided to move out like this, and the green train was right here, and I did move here. Well, guess what? We're now in the same line. We're going to be connecting together. Or I'm sorry, if the green train had come up here, for example. Well, now I would replace this like this, and now we're one line, and the brown London and Southwestern Railway has merged into the Great Western Railway. And at that point, shares will be converted. Uh, the, whoever has the most stations along the line here is going to get points, and that train is pretty much done. And now there's only green, instead of they're both being green and brown. And there's a lot more going on with how these things work. Also, there's a possibility that a train can be called isolated, which means it can't merge. It like goes into a loop. There's a picture in a book that shows an example of that. 
The game ends, actually, when one railroad line can no longer give out shares, which means six of the seven lines are gone, or isolated, or you run out of track pieces. There's 60 track pieces that you can't put on the board. If you move into someone else's station, by the way, you get a passenger pawn. So it kind of encourages you to run into someone else's station, although they'll also control that track to some degree. And then you'll score at the end of the game. Whoever has the most passenger pawns will get six points three to second place. Industry cubes that are in any city that was never connected to a railroad train are lost, but then the rest are going to score points in each industry here. Whoever has the most will get six points and then three points. And then for each railroad station that's still on the line, you get that will score like they normally did. And then whoever has the most shares in each company will score. You're going to add all these prestige points together, and whoever has the most is the winner of the game. This being a grail game, the components are fantastic. The four colors are very easy to tell apart. Pink, brown, white, and blue. These stations are cool. I like how they fit over top of the track. You can see the train going underneath them. In fact, my copy came with two trains. There's these uh, plastic ones and the wooden ones. I actually like the wooden ones a little better because it's easier to see which direction they're facing. The cubes, the board, everything is just top notch quality. The rule book, I mean, even the the sheets here where they show you, I mean, this is a kind of a mess in a sense, but it shows you this is where you can't play stuff. This is when this happens. This is how scoring works. And it shows you exactly how all the scoring works. And I found that to be fairly convenient. So this game here is a classic, right? A lot of people know about this game, but man, I have to say I hate it. <laughs> I really don't like this. I know at its heart, this is a share game, and a lot of train games are. But this one just left me cold in so many different ways. But the biggest one, by far, the number one thing that just absolutely I hate about this game, I hate in every way, is that veto round when you're moving the trains. And there's three reasons I dislike it. So the idea is, you're moving the, the, the train, I'm gonna move in this direction, I don't want you to move in that direction, so I'm gonna bid shares to stop you. First of all, I hate it thematically. That I don't understand this. It makes no sense. Like in a board meeting, you're like, oh, this is how we're going to take the company. I'm like, no, we should do this. Are you willing to give up your shares in the company to prove your point? I am. It just makes no sense thematically. Secondly, it's a real drag on the game. Every time I'm like, I'm putting out a piece. Is anyone vetoing? You are? Okay, hang on. Bid, 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 done. Okay, this is where the piece is going to go. And thirdly, it's just a non-fun game mechanism. Constantly, if you're behind on a, a track and you don't care about the track, you might as well be like, nah, I'm going to go this way. You're going to merge. It just feels like you're a spoiler and being kind of jerkish and you're forcing the person in lead to give up shares of that company just to stop you from randomly making a train go a different direction. I like it in none of these things. In fact, this is one of the most hated game mechanisms I've run it into in a long time. And the thing is, I can see why some people would like it, right? I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad game mechanism. I just personally dislike it. And also, very, very unthematic. The rest of the game is, eh, it's, this, it's, there's so much speculation in this game. And speculation is fine, but you, the speculation is fueled by making the other players go somewhere. Look, I'm going to build my station here. Never going to go there. I'm going to invest in this industry. No train's ever going to hit that city. Now, you can make the things happen yourself, but there's, you don't have a lot of actions, two actions per turn. And the game feels like it moves at a slow pace, although the companies gobble each other up pretty quickly. And if I want to play a game where big companies gobble up small countries, I'll play a choir. Yeah, there's some randomness in the choir, but it seems fun. It seems zingy. This game doesn't have that zing. This game's like, okay, these connected. Now who controls this? How many points do you get? And it felt a little mathy, which isn't too bad, but it felt clinical. This is a train game, and not once did I ever feel like there were trains involved. You're connecting track on the board, but it never felt like there was trains or delivering of goods and the, having the majority of goods in cities and things on the board. It, again, it just left me very... It just wasn't very exciting games. So, Stephenson's Rocket, I won't argue that Grail Games has put out an amazing production of this. And if you like this style game, you are going to love it. For me, though, this is one of those older games that I wouldn't have bothered reprinting, and it may have been a classic in its day, but it's just not the kind of game I find fun now. It feels more like work. Dice Tower Judgment, this is just not my style.